Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to be comparing 556 and 545 after the buffs from 12 to 30 to decide which is better, or at least which situations one is preferable over the other. Just before we get into it, I'm always saying one of the best ways for players to improve is to record their deaths and watch them back. Oh, that's really upsetting. Well, today's video is sponsored by Outplayed, a fantastic video capture app that lets you do just that. Outplayed supports 300 games, but for Tarkov specifically, it records each raid automatically as a separate video file, cutting out the stash organization in between and saving you hard drive space, as well as giving you the option to bookmark sections whilst in raid. You can do this as you go with a hotkey, such as after a really big fight, so that you don't have to hunt around for it in the recording later on. Afterwards, you could use the inbuilt video editor to cut the video to just the section that you want and share it directly to Discord, Twitter, YouTube, or Reddit from within the app itself to show to your friends or to the wider world. The fact that it records automatically is pretty cool, so do go check it out. The link for the app is down in the description and in the pinned comment. So back to today's video about 545 versus 556. This obviously depends on a lot of factors, where in the patch we are now, what this means for the kits of our opponents, the weapons that fire it, what range we're engaging at, and whether we're going after players or AI, and last but not least, the ammo stats itself. Usually, I tend to work backwards from the ammo as a starting point, but it's all in context of the other points, so we'll refer back to these as we go. Fundamentally, both calibers do have the ability to deal with the entire range of the most used armor classes from 4 to 6 across the spectrum of the available rounds, and there are a wide variety of firearms with which to deliver them to our opponents, but the effectiveness of these different categories is what we want to investigate. There are a ton of rounds for both, but at the low pen high damage end, most of them are basically useless. Leg meta isn't popular for these guns, as there are usually better options that do it for cheaper, which rules out SP through to T in 545, and Warmageddon through to M855 for 556, as under 27 pen, they can't even deal with class 3 armor. 545 US does get a special mention because of the recall reduction, but it's very situational and normally the extra shots on target don't make up for the inability to penetrate armor as you have to hit those headshots. So starting at the bottom of the viable rounds, we'll quickly run through 545 PS and M855, as these are roughly equivalent for the early game. M855 is available straight away at Peacekeeper 1 for $1.79, equivalent to about 191 rubles, with PS purchasable at 109 rubles after delivery from the past from Prapor. So not immediate, but fairly early. M855 is clearly the better round, with more damage and one more pen, given both have the same fragmentation chance, but 556 weapons outside of the ADAR are not easy to get a hold of early on, so typically the 545 AKs hold sway in the early days of a new patch. You really don't want to be using either of these rounds for very long though, as they sit right on the 50-50 penetration threshold versus a full durability class 3 armor with 56 and 66 penetration chances respectively on the first hit, and once players are using class 4, they really start to underperform badly. The main issue with 556 here appears almost instantly, from a progression sense anyway. There is a very large gap between M855 and M856A1. As 6A1 is locked behind Peacekeeper's Cult Part 1 quest, you have to get through a bunch of skier quests, find the three flash drives, complete friend from the west, and a load of Peacekeeper's Quest 2 in order to get access to this from him. With these rounds banned from the flea as well, the other way to get access to them is using the Workbench 2 craft, which as it requires Mechanic 2 is at least level 20 as a bare minimum. On the other hand, given that PP rounds get unlocked at Prapor 2 for 354 rubles, the newly buffed penetration value of 36 is now really good in the early to mid game stages of a patch, due to the close to 50% chance to pen class 4 on the first hit, which is predominantly what most players are wearing. It is possible to craft it in the Workbench 2 as well, but by that point you can normally just buy it yourself already, so there is little point. Also, as PP is available on the flea, and this is the case with BP and BT as well, you can often buy it for less than Prapor from other players who are undercutting him. So in that funny period after flea access at level 15 and Prapor 2 opens out, 545 is the clear winner, simply because we can't access anything better than M855 for 556 guns. With the changes to penetration on 545, BP is now in a really funny spot. But only one pen and one damage more were expected to pay nearly 90 rubles more per round. Practically, this takes the first pen hit chance from 46 to 55 with a little bit more armor damage. It's also at the next tier up at Prapple 3, and although there is a barter for this using two clean wiper fluids, this makes it around 700 per round, which definitely isn't worth it in my opinion. Despite BP taking BT's old position in the chart with 37 penetration, because PP has been moved up so much right underneath it, there's barely any reason to use it anymore in my opinion. 
The difference between PP and BT on the other hand is more interesting. These now have had their penetration boosted to 40 which is really quite decent getting to 87% on the first hit pen chance versus class 4. While they are more expensive still at 694 rubles on Prapor after finishing Punisher 4, the damage of these rounds is lower at 42 which guarantees a 3 hit kill to the thorax. It's important to remember that through armour, damage is mitigated even on a penetration so PP won't two shot a class 4 either way, but against scavs and players with no or low level armour like the packer, there could be a small difference here between PP and BT. A bigger problem however can be the 3 scav health pools. Only basic easy scavs have 35 HP like a regular PMC. The two harder versions both have 40 health on their heads like raiders and rogues. With the damage drop off, this means that the distance at which it's possible to not kill an unarmoured scab with a headshot is about 60 meters or so. For PP rounds, this is 150 instead, which is a decent difference. The same mechanic can work also against BT for players wearing helmets too. With the aforementioned damage mitigation, even on a penetration, it is quite possible for BT to not one tap a PMC in the head, depending on the combination of ranges and the helmet they're wearing. All that said though, practically ignoring class 4 armour at close ranges, which is the majority of Tarkov gameplay, is pretty nice. There are two barters for it at Prapor 2 as well if you want it early, but these generally cost more than you'd pay if getting it from the flea market. So it's about time that we started coming back to 556. Once the requirements have been completed, you can get M856A1 from Peacekeeper 2 for $3.86 per round. The precise number can only be seen if trying to buy a large number of bullets, and this works out to about 413 rubles, and is cheaper than BP. This is another round that can be crafted at the Workbench 2 as well, coming out at around 470 rubles, but as you can't craft something else useful in there like wires that makes money, we have to add about 250 rubles per round to account for it, coming to 720 or so. This is not insane and is about the same as BT, a little bit more but if it's your only way of getting it because you're locked behind Peacekeeper then it can be an option given that it's not on the flea market. Personally, I think this round is really good. It has a small damage buff to 54 recently which is really high for a round of this type especially given the weapons it loads into. Traditionally BT was the straight comparison to M856A1 as it also used to have 37 pen, however with this getting bumped up to 40 it's not as obvious anymore. A pen of 37 gives you the same results as BP, with a 55% chance to pen class 4 on the first hit, which is okay, but for a start, it has much higher armour damage at 52%, meaning that follow-up shots are more effective. The really big difference though comes with the fragmentation chance between the two calibers. After PS, the frag chances of 545 really fall off to 17% at most, whereas 556 tends to retain over 30% for all but the highest armour penetrating rounds. 56A1 is no exception, with a 33% chance to fragment. This is a really big deal for a number of reasons. Firstly, fragmentation on this round at close range will take the damage from 54 to 81, meaning that this round has a much higher chance to 2 tap than it looks at face value. Typically, we'd look at the situation and say 54 damage times 2 is 108, but with potentially 20% damage mitigation from armour, that takes you to 86.4, and with round drop off, it's quite likely to end up under 85 but with the 33% chance of fragmentation, it turns into a greater than 50% chance that you'll get some kind of fragment across two penetrating rounds. So although there is some RNG here, even for overall damage spraying too, the average damage is so to speak is actually up at 63 per shot, which when two PMCs are both frantically full autoing each other at close range can make a big difference. By means of comparison, this value for PP, BP and BT is only 48, 49 and 45 as the frag chance is so much lower. On this basis, and because there are a few weapons in the 556 category, such as the 101, the MDR and the SCAR, which can place a lot of shots accurately, I think the extra damage from 56A1 makes up for the lower pen versus BT in general situations. The one place that this can get a little bit hairy is at longer ranges, as the pen value dropping on M856A1 can lead to class 4s tanking a bunch of shots, but as the damage is still fairly high, it's not necessarily that big of a deal. 556 is very aerodynamic and at 100 meters it retains over 50 damage and just shy of 35 pen, whereas BT is down to under 39 damage and the penetration is only slightly better, falling just under 37 itself. So moving on, we have the 7N40 round, which is the unicorn round because it's not really plentiful enough to ever use. Probably for the best, as with 52 damage, 44 pen, 50% accuracy improvement and a massive recoil reduction bonus too, it's actually insane. But as most players find far less than 100 throughout a whole wipe, it remains super niche for maybe loading in 2 or 3 bullets to minimise the recoil of initial AK sprays. 
Last up, we have our end game rounds, starting with BS. This is barter only from Prepl 3, pricing at around 1500 rubles equivalent for two hot rods and two Marlboro 6. With 40 damage and 51 pen, the damage issues from BT are even more acute here, however, this round eats class 5 for breakfast. While BT only has a 9% chance to pen class 5 on the first hit, BS has a 91% chance, a little bit of a difference. Because of the damage problems, this really is only used in CQB in the late game against players. With the increased health of rogues, bosses, guards and raiders, the degradation of the damage profile of these high-end intermediate cartridges is partly responsible for why 762 of various types is often preferred as the best rounds overall. Interestingly, although we can get access to BS fairly early at Prapol 3, it's actually more comparable to M995 than M855A1 from 556, as 55A1 sits in that middle value with 44 penetration. Banned from the Flea 2 and only accessible from Peacekeeper 4 at $7.40, equivalent to 792 rubles, or Skier 4 at 526 rubles, the equivalent here would be 7 and 40 I suppose, but as it's non-existent in the game, 545 is missing a round that fits this purpose. 55A1 had a small damage increase recently to 49, at the cost of 1 penetration, but it's arguably stronger compared to 545 than it was before. 44 pen is an awkward spot where you only get 30% first hit chance to defeat class 5, but the idea is that with the lower recoil of 556, you can land a few extra shots on target. All 556 weapons also got a recoil buff recently too, so although it's not perfect, it sits much better in the progression than either BT, which doesn't have enough pen late game, or BS, which has too low damage. Similarly to 56A1, 55A1 has an incredible fragment chance of 34%, moving that average damage figure up to 57 when taking it into account. This helps to improve the 2-tap chance against class 4 as well, which lots of players will still be using. I still personally think that this is the best round across the two calibers later on, because it works really well in a wide variety of situations and honestly is such a bargain at Skier 4. As we said, BS is usually shunned by players late game and is analogous to M995, which can be crafted in the Workbench 3 for only 865 rubles equivalent, or 1115 with a rough opportunity cost added. As we move to 42 damage here as well, we start to see some of the same issues from 545, although for Thorax sprays the 32% frag chance helps here too with an average damage of 49. While M995 deals handily with class 5 armour at a 93% first hit pen, it's actually surprisingly low against class 6, with only a 23% chance. Still better than BS, which is a 13% chance, but at the very top end, you can technically move up to PPBS, otherwise known as a Golnik, with a 62 penetration and a 92% chance against class 6, effectively rendering all armour useless. This can only be crafted in the Workbench 3 for around 1,100 rubles per round before opportunity cost, but with 37 damage is the lowest of all the cartridges in either calibre, and with a tiny frag chance too, you really don't want to be using this at range at all. At 90 meters, it loses the ability to headshot even naked players, which is pretty silly, and the same practically goes for SSA AP on the 556 side, although this one is like 7 and 40 being finding rate only, so it's practically gold dust to get hold of. So between the two calibers, which is better? Well in the early game, with the availability of the weapons and especially with early access to PP, 545 really shines this patch. However, once you can get M856A1, I still think this round has significant advantages due to its overall damage despite the increased penetration chance of BT. The same goes for 55A1, as 545 rounds don't really have a good contender to match it due to the low damage of BS. For the pure endgame rounds, all of them will likely pale in comparison to those in 762 with good damage, but if you were forced to choose, I'd probably still err on the side of 556 due to the potential for high-end M4 builds and decreased time to kill and shots on target than the 545 equivalent. Only if you are worried about class 6 specifically is it ever worth moving up to a Golnik, as the downsides here on damage and increased recoil just aren't worth taking 99% of the time. Next up, take a look at my breakdown of the AK-101's lowest recoil, level 2 and level 3 trader builds, which is turning out to be a beastly weapon this white between the round and recoil buffs and its flexibility in modding. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.